Hi. How are you guys? Uh, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever it is you're watching this. Um, welcome to another vlog. It has been a very slow yet fast two months. This is this is sort of a, a combination of February and March. I'm not quite sure what footage I have because so much time has passed and I have been playing a game of catch up in terms of work and deadlines and personal deadlines all while paying attention to my health. So long story short, if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that my entire household tested positive for COVID and it hasn't been fun. Um, we're all doing well and I'll discuss it more throughout this vlog, but uh, that was definitely a huge inconvenience that set me back by nearly a month. And it definitely robbed me of my time and energy. I just keep thinking back to my January vlog and how much I was on a roll and then entering February, being super excited to launch my Patreon and have my shop ready for March, only to have things take a turn. But here we are now. I'm just very, very thankful for your patience and your support while I'm dealing with all of this, while my family is recovering, while I'm recovering. Like, I'm looking at my fiddle leaf fig plant right now, which I repotted in our last vlog, and uh, I don't think she liked it. She has one leaf left. Um, <laughs> that's kind of how I've been feeling, kind of hanging on by a thread, and I don't think I truly gave myself the chance to rest properly, but I'm doing my best to balance as much as I can within the limitations I have at the moment. I was also super, super excited to share some projects that I've been working on, including the feature that I had for Adult Swim on International Women's Day, and also my feature in a BuzzFeed video. <laughs> cool. I'll leave links below so you can check it out. I have successfully uploaded some printables onto my website while I'm still working on relaunching the physical items in my shop and working on new products. Uh, I also finally launched my Patreon, which has been amazing. I meant to launch it in January and then it got pushed to February and then it got pushed to March and I was contemplating on having it open in April because I didn't want to launch so late into the month, but I have been working on all of the content that's readily available on there and working through the tiers and organizing what I wanted to offer and realizing if I could handle physical rewards or originals at the moment and making sure my Patreon is sort of the best of both worlds where, where I'm able to sustain myself and my patrons are able to have access to wonderful, exclusive, juicy content. I was also very, very much astonished that uh, we hit our first three goals within the first 30 minutes of launch and I had to keep going back and adding more milestone goals. Um, so we are almost at like, I... <laughs> My Patreon has almost made it close to $2,000 and it's like, that is, that is a lot of money. Like I was skeptical that we would even reach a hundred dollars. I don't know why, like my brain was like, even if I have like three patrons, like it'll just be us, it'll be cool, it'll be great, it'll be fun. And there were people who were like, this is my first time making a Patreon account and pledging. And that is such a huge honor to me because these are people who are essentially offering their hard-earned money to believe and continue supporting my work. It's... <laughs> it's overwhelming, but in the best way possible because 
it's very much a mutual relationship. I'm very, very grateful to have not only a channel here on YouTube, but also a place like Patreon, where all of these platforms help move my work forward. And not only just myself, but bringing other people along the way. It's been such a rewarding feeling because launch day was just a reminder of how many people are willing to be there for me and to trust my work, to back my work. You know, every time someone purchases something from my shop, that is someone who wants a piece of me with them. I remember last year around this same time, I was filled with dread and anxiety with how my future would pan out as an illustrator. And I am more than grateful to see these gears turning and also being able to see so much growth and momentum along the way. Even if you aren't a patron, this is in no way me pressuring you to become a patron or making you feel bad that you aren't a patron. It's genuinely there if you want to pledge. I know what it's like growing up low income, like severely low income. So I knew that bit of guilt where it's like, I want to support my favorite artists, but I can't. And guess what? We are in a panoramic and things are really difficult. It's affected me directly. Um, so quite literally affected me for the past two months. I'm just very, very grateful that if you're watching this, if you follow me on any of my social media, if you look at my work, if you enjoy my work, I'm very grateful to have made it into your sphere of influence. Like that to me is, is and always will be support. And Patreon is sort of just the cherry on top to extend my work. So I'm not sure what footage I have thus far, but this will be a sort of mishmash of February and March and probably a lot of voiceovers. So sit tight and I hope you enjoy the vlog. Good morning. Happy February and happy Black History Month. It started snowing last night. It's snowing pretty heavy. There's several inches of snow and I have been waiting for snow for so long. I think the last time I remember it snowing this hard was when I was a kid. Today is also hourly comic day and I tried it several years ago. I don't know how people like sit down to draw every single hour because you know the whole point is like you just existing and then you know doing a visual of like what you accomplished each hour or every other hour but I'm sketching it out on my iPad. Just a quick little sketch right here and then I will ink it later and right now I'm actually editing the January vlog. Ooh, there's so much snow outside. I have a lot of exciting things for February and hopefully a Patreon launch. Oh, do you hear that? That's the snow plow, which means I'm gonna stop recording right now. <laughs> this is a 10 out of 10 professional setup for taking product photos, okay? Oh, that's so strange. That's like out of the blue. We haven't spoken in years. Why are you texting me? Thank you. 
morning. If you hear yelling in the background, there are children playing outside in the snow. This week I started using Notion and it's working well for me because now I can have like to-do lists under to-do lists and be able to separate different areas of things I need to get done because I have things I need to do in my personal life and also for work. I finished taking photos of those froggy earrings and I'm very very proud of them. At the beginning of the week we also had a blizzard for three consecutive days. I am in the process of finishing up printables so that they're ready for this Sunday because I'll have my shop reopen with digital goods and just the earrings. I have to pop by the post office today I'm using Anusha's tote and I'm sending my trade to Megan and a little gift back to Anusha and one package that just like entered the void for someone. Last night I had a really gnarly headache I was overwhelmed with the amount of things I have to get done for February and meeting deadlines, meeting my own deadlines and rethinking scenarios. I've been really good at not overthinking events that happened in the past or thinking too much about what will happen in the future because I realized that I only have control over the things that I'm doing right now and I never want to miss a single day not being in the present in my 20s, but my brain will still occasionally dip in the past or the future and then I get really anxious. But my blood pressure spiked really high, like something ridiculous, 102 over 160 something, which if your blood pressure is that high, you need to go to the hospital. However, this has happened frequently and I spoke to my doctor about it. I'm just a generally anxious person and when I overthink things, I get frustrated and then I get angry at myself because I don't allow myself to get angry more often in the moment of things because I'm a very forgiving person, um, which is a whole other conversation. I used to not be able to establish boundaries or say no to people and tell them that, hey, maybe this thing is upsetting me or hurting me. And so there would be leftover anger Anyways, um, I'm doing better now, but I put on this hoodie because it kind of emulates like someone hugging you. So that's how I've been doing. I've been journaling. I need to get back into yoga and meditation. I've been making sure to cook for myself because a lot of my energy has to do with not meeting my physical needs. And one of my physical needs is eating properly and taking my vitamins and drinking enough water. Just wanted to pop in and share that with you guys. I am going to head to the post office now. Oh my goodness. Do you see that blizzard? It is so beautiful. And look, look at the friend that showed up today. She got a little snow scarf. Sometimes this is what I need to do to get the right photos. Hi, I listed those froggy earrings. I made 10 originally, 10 pairs, and then I did 10 more pairs because so many people wanted them, but obviously like I'm not a machine. So I do hand sculpt every single one of them from like start to finish, uh, including the assembly and the packaging. All of them sold out within three minutes. Okay, I'm gonna just take photos of these printables now because I have some stuff I want to put on my Instagram. Why is this a live photo? 
why, why would you do that? Okay. <clears throat> it's also snowing outside. We are having snow this entire week. I have to record a draw with me and just frantically start up Patreon things. A little stressed again. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go eat lunch and figure this out. Current state of my desk, frantically figuring things out. Lunch, which is lentils, bulgur wheat, and spinach. Green tea brewing over there. And just a bunch of things scattered and photos I was trying to take. Hi, I'm back. I don't remember where we left off, but I was a little overwhelmed. I've had a slightly stressful weekend. I've had two blood pressure spikes. I'm doing okay. We have a blood pressure reader in my house because my family tends to have high blood pressure and I guess I, that translated into me as well. I'm doing okay. Uh, I've just been chugging water because I don't think caffeine and my love for salt does any better for that. I am tackling emails right now and this is when I start feeling weird about taking care of myself because I know that I needed to ask for an extension for a deadline. You know, we're in a pandemic and not everyone is in the best state of health and I know that I need to take it easy this week and not worry about cranking something out or filming myself when I'm on really low energy because I don't want to do that. Uh, but at the same time, like, if that's how I'm feeling, that's how I'm feeling because uh, not everything about, you know, being an artist and working in a constricted space is, is that glamorous. I always want to ask as early as possible rather than waiting last minute and not being able to have that flexibility. Once again, thank you to all of the people that are adopting those beautiful, cute little froggy babies with hearts on it, okay? So many people asked if I was gonna restock them, but I don't think until like next year or I, I don't, I'm not sure because the thing with handmade goods is that they're, they take so much time to make. And I'm a person, I'm not a machine. Even doing 20 pairs of earrings, so that's 40 like individual pieces of like sculpted clay is, is so much. My camera battery is about to die, but let me show you really quickly. I got these today. They're second hand. Off of, ow, I just got bonked. Okay, these are, these are some overalls off of Depop and I'm gonna do exciting things for them. I'm not gonna say too much because this is for a client uh, and I signed an NDA, so uh, some spicy info for you. I'm not sure if some footage will make it into this vlog, but you guys will find out later. Yeah, so I have a lot of things to get done, but I'm doing it one step at a time and making sure that I don't burn out because the girl gotta take care of herself. And I hope you are too. Um, very, very important. Anxiety juice. Hi, I'm back. I put on a little bit of lipstick, because why not? And I just got a nice little package in the mail. This is from Megan, aka Studio Meggie, and I fell in love with her earrings, okay? And I was like, can you hold on to a pair for me just in case they sold out? And during the same time, I was working on those Valentine Froggy earrings, and then I was like, we can do a little tradey. Things like trades definitely needs to be in agreement on both sides and if someone is comfortable because I believe in paid work. So I was down to like pay whatever money for these earrings, but we both came to the conclusion that we wanted to do a little earring trade, which was super rad. And so we are going to unpackage it on camera. I like that she shipped this to me in reused packaging, which I have absolutely no problem with. The coffee has definitely spiked up my heart rate and also just the excitement of opening this. Okay. What is this? <laughs> Wait! Oh my goodness! She made... She made a kuni bun. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. This is hilarious because I was literally just working on this sculpture of how kuni sits. Like he extends both of his legs like this. A card. There's a little froggy postcard in there. Some adorable stickers. She also wrote me a letter and it's like written on this like mushroom paper. So I'm gonna go read it off camera. Okay, I'm back from reading the letter. It was a very sweet letter. Continuing on with the 
un unboxing and packaging. I always save packaging, by the way. Like, I'm going to reuse this twine, I'm gonna reuse this box, I just reuse everything. <laughs> oh, they're so cute! <gasps> mm, okay. <laughs> Look how beautiful those earrings are. Like, I am a sucker for apparel or accessories that are, like, illustrated. Does that make sense? Like, graphic elements added to fashion. Megan has an Etsy shop, so you should totally get yourself some earrings. Let me stop rambling and put them on. You guys, these are so beautiful. I don't know exactly what these characters are, but I just have so much admiration for them. Megan, you have snatched my heart, okay? Whenever I get compliments on my earrings or just parts of my outfit, my favorite thing is letting people know that an artist made this. It just brings me so much joy. Once again, Megan, thank you so much for all of the sweet goodies, okay? Definitely check out her work, her YouTube, her shop, and her Instagram. Okay, I'm gonna link all of them below. Him. morning today is a very beautiful wednesday it's wednesday february 10th and i don't think we've caught up i've been pretty tired i've been trying to pace myself accordingly and not making the same mistakes of overworking myself today i will be shipping out these froggy earrings i had to make the difficult decision of pulling shipping from the uk entirely because of that and just it's it's so complex like i literally spent my entire sunday <laughs> panicking over figuring out how to get like a e eori number some people have also suggested selling on etsy because they handle that collection but the only difficulty with etsy is that their fees are much higher i use squarespace and also the fact that i would have to divide stock amongst my Squarespace e-commerce and also Etsy, which is gonna be a nightmare, especially for handmade goods. And Etsy also has a really ridiculous listing fee. So for things like stickers, like every single sticker is gonna cost 25 cents just to list it. And that's exactly why I have um, not Etsy as my online storefront. Anyways, um, I wanted to show you, let's catch up. This is my, this is my room right now. Um, I have a box of laundry that I finished that still needs to go back in the closet. I was craving chocolate chip cookies and I had saved some chickpea liquid, AKA aquafaba, which is a really amazing egg replacer if you're doing vegan baking. These are the cookies in question. These are some earrings that I packed and Julian's mom actually bought two of my enamel pins. Um, these won't be available until spring. Current situation of my desk, there's like a lot of things on the floor. I also thrifted some stuff that I will show you guys later. My Hoya surprised me once again. Let me show you. This is my Hoya Crimson Princess and it's known for its beautiful pink leaves and pink stems. And this is where the flowers bloom from. So this little doodad is called a peduncle. And I didn't notice, but look at this beast of a plant. And she surprised me with another gorgeous bloom. My arm can only reach so high, but do you see how beautiful those star-shaped flowers are? They look like little candies. I was also interviewed for a podcast. This is Plancy Podcast, and it's run by my friends Cameron and Colin. So Colin ended up commissioning me for a promotional poster, just a little small thing put together. It looks like this, and I'm pretty proud of it. The little icons of Colin and Cameron are so simple and small. I've captured the likeness pretty well. If you want to give the podcast a 
listen. I've linked the Spotify link and also the link on YouTube if you want to check it out. It was really interesting because it kind of gave me a trial run of what it's going to be like having my own podcast for Patreon. My arm is straining just from holding this camera because I'm not using a tripod and I'm just, just running out of breath. This morning, I was looking at apartments just to get an idea of prices, space, locations, and what to expect. And I found the perfect three bedroom apartment for, it was a little bit over all, what all three of us agreed on uh, because I'm moving with Emma and Julian. There's just so much light coming into those rooms and so much space and it's so close to the train station. It's literally the perfect apartment. However, the move-in date is in March. We are probably not gonna move until the end of May slash beginning of June because I am waiting for Emma to rent out her room in LA so she can move back to New York. And as I am speaking about all of this, being able to launch my Patreon and hopefully having some people support my work so that I have another avenue of financial competence to have the confidence to move. And as I've mentioned, if it wasn't for me saving up money from when I had a day job, I, I wouldn't be able to do this because, you know, as an artist, money fluctuates quite a lot um, because I don't have an in-house illustration job, I do freelance. And there are moments where I make a lot of money and there are moments where uh, my store is closed or I'm not actively seeking client work because I'm working on other things. It's funny because Julian is actually training today at the place where I used to work. He's more of a person that likes the security of having a day job, which is fine. However, I find that I'd rather spend as many hours as I can working on self-initiated projects uh, that end up sort of paying itself off. Essentially, I'm wishing the best of luck to all three of us because we are going to have this home together. It is going to be the Rahman Alexander Fasholo household, and I'm very, very excited. I know it's just a couple of months away, but I know with the pace of things, in a matter of months, I'll be in my own place. Very scary, but also very exciting. Right now, I'm going to write the order notes and pack. I've got some bubble mailers I'm gonna reuse because these are perfectly fine. And if you get bubble mailers and if you ever send stuff to people, even if it's your friends and family, just hold on to these. These, they're, they're free. You don't need to go outside and buy them. You can just reuse them and it's totally fine. I have some pink tissue paper that I've just cut up and glassine bags. These adorable flower post-its that I write notes on. My business cards and the thank you card that has instructions on the back of how to recycle and deal with the rest of the packaging. This is the setup, but I'm not gonna lie guys, it's kind of cute. I didn't fully assemble this crate because it's a little hard to disassemble, but it came into use. Now I can hold on to stuff while I pack and that way nothing is just like sliding or falling off my desk. Hello? How are you? Oh, how was it? You just got back problems. I think you need to get a back brace, Julius. Yeah, great. Did you like it? Was it better than Blake? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you definitely have retail PTSD. I'm like low-key glad that was my first and last paid job, but it was it was very chill. I, I enjoyed it a lot and I'm glad that like you have it now. <laughs> so you got the job. Congratulations. We were just watching Candy Wiley. Now he gonna buy stretchers. Yeah, we used to, we, we would do like stretcher bars for Candy Wiley, it was pretty cool. Yeah, there was a time I was working and there was this like gorgeous lady that came in and she had this adorable like tiny, teeny, tiny chihuahua in the most darling like robin's egg blue sweater and we were just babbling over the dog because it was so cute. And then when she left, um, Walter looked at me and he was just like, do you know who that is? And I was like, no, I don't. He was like, that's Matisse's granddaughter. And I was like, yo, what? If you have to tell me that you take the J, M, and Z train, I don't know where you live. You don't live in New York. Did you see the apartment that I sent you? It's literally perfect. But what I was saying is that the move-in date for that apartment is in March, which is like way too early for all of us, but like low key, yeah, we're gonna find a place. But that was like perfect in terms of the lighting and the space, cause it's 1300 square feet. That's freaking huge. Exactly, look at you, see? Everything's gonna settle down for all of us. <laughs> Funny.
have you guys are all doing Inktober or some shape of Inktober and I didn't want to like burden you with like or put more challenges on top. We're coming up tomorrow and on Friday I have a shipping day schedule so I'm going to have like, orders and right here and I have some reused packaging and these stickers that I print through my roller printer and these eco enclosed padded mailers right here hello you guys are currently balanced under a roll of tape a half stack of post-its and a tape measure um this is a corn cozy I've been having intense cramps but no period am I dying I don't know this corn cozy is nice because I can throw it in the microwave and it becomes a nice little reusable heat pack once I was done packing orders, I had six minutes to run to the post office. And when I tell you I ran, I literally turned into the flash. Everything went well, but I forgot that I canceled an order. When you cancel an order, the inventory restocks by itself and I forgot. And so someone else bought another pair of earrings and I was like, wait, no, there are no more earrings left. I am not athletic. When I was walking back home, I could feel the burn in my abdomen and the burn in my glutes. I just I just wanted to fill you guys in on that. Is this useful information? I'm not sure, but it was it was funny. I just had a chocolate chip cookie and now I am chilling. Just kidding. I have to finish the yearly calendar and also the zines. Every single day I'm like this is going to be easy. I have all the scans, I have all the photos. Like that calendar on the wall is literally 98% complete. I just have to do it. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday the 11th. And last night I finished up a Valentine card slash postcard. I know Valentine's Day is in like three days. I am the master of sending very, very late cards to friends and family. This is how it's looking like. It's a slightly threatening Valentine's card, but I think it's cute. And I finally branched out on my brushes and I used the Erisograph brushes for this one. By the time this vlog is out, I don't think it'll be up anymore, but y'all can admire it. Where are all these planes coming from? Why are you on a flight? Oh, that's spirit. That about to fall out of the sky. Hurry, why are you on a plane? In a panoramic, I got an order today. You guys might know Fran or Franard, and she has her own stationary business called We Are Nice Humans. These are some of the stickers and the postcard that comes with the orders. And for the longest time, I've always wanted a pin by her and one of the radical silk screen shirts. And I really love the fact that she prints on secondhand shirts, which is something that I have also been considering because I don't want to create new demand for shirts. But at the same time, I know thrift stores are meant to be accessible for people of lower income. So I don't want to, you know, just take that resource away from people that are less privileged than I am. So also considering, um, ethically made shirts by Bella Canvas, which are made in LA. Went off on a little tangent there, but when I got my order, Fran's studio assistant Lou left a little note on this, and this is what made me smile this morning. I ordered one of her handmade clay doggo pins. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, this is massive. This is the doggo, and on the back it's signed. This is the shirt that I have been waiting ages for. Not like, not like I was waiting on the order. I was just waiting for one to come in my size. Yes. Look at how cool that shirt is. It's a beautiful two color silk screen print. And let me actually go try this on. Look who decided to show up. I didn't even see you in here. Come over. Oh. Oh. Oh, you wanna leave. <laughs> very cool very stylish it's actually kind of funny because i sign my name as rad on things i 
I signed my name as Rad on artwork because it's just like a shortened version of my full name. Let me get my skateboard. It's just filled with stickers. The reason that you don't see any wear here is because I can't do cool tricks and I'm also scared of going to a skate park because there's just like it's just too much male energy in skate parks and I'd rather just go with my friends. But obviously I can't do that because pandemic. But skating is something that I love doing. Um, I have a ton of stickers on here, mostly by artists. The moment COVID has fixed itself, whichever year that will be. I'm gonna wear this shirt and I'm gonna skate, okay? I also forgot to show you guys that I got a new tripod. This actually isn't new. I took this off the hands of Paloma and this is the older one. It's not like old, it's only, it's not even a year old, honestly. So it's pretty good, but it can very easily get kicked over. And I was having a little trouble with the like ball head and like these screws. It's a decent tripod, but it was like 80, it was like 60 or $80, I don't remember. But for something that was 60 or $80, like it's not the best. And I was heavily considering getting a really expensive tripod. But then Paloma messaged me and she's just like, I have one that I don't want anymore and I can send it to you. So this is the one and oh my goodness, this is built like a tank. Do you see the difference? Like this, this one is built like me, fettuccine noodle, and then this one, this is the one. I also really like that the heads articulate. I don't have to like do this with a stupid ball head. And I'm going to see if there's actually this arm attachment that is compatible with this because if that was compatible that would be great. I'm speaking without context but I'll put images of what I mean so you'll understand what exactly I'm referring to. I'm gonna go wrap up that valentine now. You guys are on the new tripod and my printer is going in the back. I did a print test of what the colors are gonna look like. All right here she is. I have a postcard version and also a card version where you can like fold it in half and like, send it in an envelope. This like paper that I get is actually from Michaels. It's the 100 pound cardstock. I should probably invest in archival papers because I don't know the integrity of this paper. All I know is that it's acid free, but acid free doesn't automatically mean archival. I think I'm gonna, let me double check the measurements of this. I'm going to probably make the card a little bit smaller so it fits in a 4x6 envelope. I'm gonna run to the post office yet again because I have more packages that I needed to send out yesterday. I'm gonna go make the PDF version of this now. Happy Friday. It's the 12th, which means it's Lunar New Year. So happy Lunar New Year to anyone who celebrates Lunar New Year. Our landlord is actually Chinese. So my mom texted him, happy Lunar New Year. And he usually drops off mooncakes every year. And what I do is I save the tin because it's so beautiful. Like, why would I throw these out? So I just use this to hold stationery and old letters and whatnot. I finished printing a nice stack of Valentine postcards for my friends. And I thought I would show you the stamps that I got. These are the regular first class mail stamps. Then we have the coral reef postcard stamps and this additional 20 cent postage with bunnies on them. And my mom got me a punch needle off of Facebook Marketplace, okay? It's this number 10 Oxford punch needle. And if you didn't know, I really love fiber arts and anything with like yarn and textile and fabric. I've never done punch needle because I could never get the tension correct. Before this, I actually had a really tiny clover embroidery punch needle. Since I had so much chunky yarn left over from the fiber arts class that I took, I thought why not get a nice punch needle and why not make fiber art pieces in the way that I illustrate? Again, definitely not something I'm going to sell because I like to keep 
this as a hobby for me, something that I do in my downtime, and it's a good thing to make sure you have non-monetized hobbies. That's sort of it for today. I'm sort of just like scraping up everything for Patreon, gathering all resources, I'm making little icons, spot illustrations, etc. And still figuring out pricing because I don't want to have like 50 tiers. I'm already having like seven different tiers, which is quite a lot. I don't think I showed you guys, but I, I got this really cute pink portfolio case from Jam Paper to organize my invoice sheets. I also put this doggo pin by Fram on this tote bag by mice, and I think they complement each other. Not me dropping chicken everywhere. Why, why, why are you eating paper? No, just like bite marks and missing remnants of paper. Why are you eating paper? No, you can't get upset because I told you you can't eat paper. Today is Saturday. I'm actually wearing a mask because my aunt, my mom, and my dad are feeling sick. They got tested yesterday to check if it's COVID or not and the results will come on Monday. We're all hoping that it's not COVID and it's just a regular flu. But either way, just to be safe, I am staying in my room and I'm wearing my mask if I'm like in the living room, kitchen, or bathroom. My dad isn't an essential worker but he has to go to work almost all days of the week so he does take public transit and he was the one feeling the symptoms first, which makes the most sense. It's one of those things where like, very unpredictable. I will provide updates if things are okay, and if they're not, then we're gonna work through them. Other than that, I have promised you guys that I would show you some of the wares that I got for whenever I move. Some of the things that I'm gonna show you are thrifted locally and other things are actually off of like Instagram yard sale. I got this really cute apple dish for a dollar. Oh, am I losing my voice? Oh shit. I've been having this next to my desk and sort of storing my SD cards and like camera batteries and just small things that I don't know where to put so it just goes in here so I don't lose it. Then we have this holder thing, but I think it's actually a carry for like napkins and utensils, which I think is really, really cool and it's just so perfect. Right as I was about to leave the thrift store, I came across this. Y'all, this is a Le Creuset. I know I'm probably butchering the name, but it's one of them fancy enamel kettles for $7. $7. So now I have a beautiful yellow kettle to take with me. The reason that I'm not mentioning what thrift store it is is because it's in my neighborhood, so if I were to share that, it's like completely giving away where I live. Next, let me show you what I got off of that Instagram yard sale. I got two of these adorable Miffy lunch boxes. Then we have this beautiful little pan. Apparently this isn't the actual lid to it, but it matches, so... I love the little flower designs on it. This has enough space to cook for one to two people. I am a very small person, I don't need huge things, but something big that I did get. This really cute soup pot. So this is also enamelware and there's flowers on it. Literally, it's just perfect. I look forward to making plenty of delicious vegan soups in this. That's pretty much all I got. I'm very hesitant to use the word haul because I buy what I need. Okay, I'm gonna go relax. I used some old stretcher bars. Some really bad stretcher bars, actually. And I nailed the monk's cloth to the bars here. When I got this needle, it came with this slightly scratchy yarn. And now I'm just practicing. Do you guys like my really wonky, ugly heart with, with one very strange loop? Hey, uh, we've made it to the part of the vlog where I stopped filming myself speaking and rather just uh, me going about my day. So I'm just gonna do this voiceover while I compile this montage of moments from February and March on Valentine's Day. Conveniently enough, my parents got their COVID test results back and both were positive. And initially my dad, my aunt were coughing and then my mom, and despite how careful we are around each other, I started to panic when I lost all sense of taste and smell, which was an indicator that I might have COVID too. So the rest of my family got rapid tested and it turns out everyone has it. And it's really weird wearing masks in your own home. It's not fun. Nobody deserves to get sick, but honestly, I was fuming. 
because we live in New York City and we are incredibly mindful of all the CDC guidelines to protect ourselves and other people from contracting COVID. I've been in situations where it's hard to social distance, like the subway or the supermarket, and from all the places that could have put me at risk, uh, I got sick from the rest of my family under my own roof. It sucks because this virus affects everyone differently, so my symptoms were not as severe, thankfully. However, I was going through intense fatigue and had a very difficult time eating because I couldn't taste anything. I have never felt this drained of energy in my entire life. I was also oversleeping a lot and would wake up incredibly sore just everywhere and my body pretty much felt like a brick. On top of that, it doesn't help as someone who works from home. So the first thing I had to do was send a bunch of emails letting clients know I need more time because my priority was to heal and recover rather than pushing myself to get everything done and then rest, uh, which is a really bad habit of mine. Also, there were certain days I felt completely fine and other days it felt like I was withering away despite feeling like I had recovered. Had I not gotten tested, I would have assumed that my body was just under stress, but that obviously wasn't the case and that's why it's so important to be cautious during a time like this because that's how you can get others sick. So far, I've tested twice within a two-week interval. It was a PCR test, so the results take a few days rather than a rapid test, which gets done in like 10 to 15 minutes. And both times, I've tested positive, which was a bummer. Currently, I feel much better than I did in February, but allegedly, these symptoms can linger for up to three months, which is terrifying. There were also moments the muscle soreness was so bad, it felt like I couldn't walk or crouch to pick something up off the floor, or if I climbed up the stairs, I would very easily run out of breath, which isn't normal. I mean, like, if you can hear me kind of running out of breath right now. Luckily, I was never coughing or sneezing, so I wasn't contagious in that aspect, but the rest of my family is doing much better. My brother is okay, Cooney is okay. However, my mom needed an inhaler for a little while, but it's been a slow recovery. Thankfully, so many of our family friends and relatives offered to help. They dropped off food and groceries in our lobby. Julian also dropped off some medicine and KN95 masks because, uh, especially with the newer strains of COVID, it's advised to double mask with at least one surgical mask. And so many of my followers sent so much good energy my way, so... Thank you for giving me the space to heal and catch up. Thank you for being ever so patient. And right now, my shop isn't open for physical items, but if you bought one of the printables or digital goods, thank you so much. Um, if you're currently a patron, thank you so, so much. I'll talk a little bit more about Patreon in a bit, but um, during this time, I was really stressed about not being able to taste my food. I haven't really had the best relationship with food as a teenager, so getting to where I am now, where I can enjoy food, when that gets taken away, it brings back spicy memories. So I tried to follow this Jamaican remedy where you char an orange over an open flame, and then you scoop out the fruit and eat it as is, or with some brown sugar, and this is meant to jumpstart your taste buds, however, it's just a temporary fix. And I remember one of my followers said that they had COVID during the very beginning and they still have trouble tasting their food. So I hope that isn't the case for me. Low key, I kind of just like the taste of a cooked orange now. And I've had about five of these. My best friend, Emma, who I love so much, she mailed me some extra K95s our way and a little froggy patch. There's also a website by a grassroots company one of my followers sent me, so if you need a proper surgical grade mask, I'll link it below. Heidi, aka Heidi Roo on Instagram, sent me a care package filled with stationery, prints, and magical teas, which brought such a huge smile to my face. Vicky and Tiffany also sent me some letters and goodies in the mail. I can't even express how grateful I am to have developed these connections with people over the internet. 
And the fact that they took time out of their day to think about me and send something to make me feel better, which is really nice when you are homebound for nearly a month with very minimal interaction. On the 21st of February, it was International Mother Language Day, which celebrates the recognition of when the people of Bangladesh fought to preserve the Bangla language, thus bringing awareness to preserve linguistics and culture while embracing being multilingual. So my parents are both from Bangladesh, However, I was born and raised in New York City, so there's quite a bit of duality in my identity as a brown woman. I shared a bit of history of my family's country, and it was so nice when people were learning more about where my roots come from. So Bangladesh, which was formerly East Pakistan, went through ethnic cleansing and the erasure of Bengali language and culture while being forced to assimilate and join West Pakistan, which is modern day Pakistan. And this is what sparked the War of Independence. It sucks because a lot of the political issues within the Indian subcontinent are symptoms of colonization, which divided us further despite having so much similarities with each other. It's also why there's a huge problem with colorism, even though we are similar brown folks. We were literally grouped up and divided by the British based on religion and skin tone. Country borders were also defined by the British because there are pockets of Bengali people in India too. Bangladesh wasn't recognized as an official country until 1971, when they finally claimed independence with the help of the Indian military. But February 21st itself commemorates a demonstration held way back in 1952 by students of Dhaka University challenging this push for the erasure of our language. And not surprisingly enough, there was police brutality involved to silence these students who were openly fired at. Had it not been for those protesters and people challenging the government, we would have lost so much of our culture along the way. And that's why I'm so grateful to speak many languages. Unfortunately, I can't read or write in Bengali, but I can communicate fluently, which comes as a surprise for my relatives since I look very American, whatever that means. Also glad that my heritage makes it into my illustrations. And it was nice when I got to share this info and my followers were really intrigued and interested. I also mentioned how the headphones I use by Bose is actually sound engineered by a Bengali Indian man named Amar Gopal Bose, which is really dope. There's also around 40-ish different dialects of Bengali languages, and my family speaks Shuddha Bangla, which most city folk speak. As someone who speaks Bengali and is raised in New York City, I speak at three times speed. Bangla is also gender neutral, the default pronouns are not gender assigned, which is lit. Uh, and other than Bengali, I've studied Spanish for three years of middle school, and in high school, I took four years of Japanese language up to the AP level. It took me a very long time to embrace not only my culture, but also my appearance. There was so much struggle when it came to telling people that I was Asian, because Western culture has embedded in our brain that Asia consists of China, Korea, and Japan, and that's it. Asia is literally one of the most diverse continents on the planet, and it sucks that I have to specify South Asian when mentioning things revolving my culture, especially right now when the Asian community has faced a spike in hate crimes. And a lot of that has to do with being scared of learning about each other and harmful assumptions we make towards entire cultures and turning them into monoliths rather than seeing them as individual experiences. Obviously, this surge is more so directed towards East Asian, but there's so much work we need to do together to protect Asian lives. I grew up in a post 9-11 society in New York where it happened. I literally watched the second Twin Tower crash all the way from Queens when I was about three or four years old. And the amount of times my dad or my relatives who wear hijab have been called terrorists are one too many. Not only is it disgusting, but it's harmful when no one steps in to say anything or de-escalate the situation. So when you hear people pleading to protect Asian lives, when we state that Black Lives Matter, when we protect women and trans folks, etc., we have to wonder what are these harmful things we need to dismantle first? What experiences do we choose to listen to? and if we need to adjust the space in our hearts in order to empathize with other people. Take note on how we treat other people or how we impose our own criticisms that might actually be xenophobic. In my last vlog, I shared my enamel pins, which are manufactured overseas, mainly in China. There was an Instagram post that put these feelings of anti-Asian racism into words very perfectly in regards to manufacturing, because people immediately assume that any country that isn't a quote, first world country 
is simply reduced down to nothing but unethical, unsafe, dirty, or barbaric conditions, and therefore everyone who works there is poor and subject to those conditions. Which isn't entirely true. Is there exploitative labor? Yes, but on a global scale. But to reduce entire countries down to only the negative aspects is xenophobic. Especially if you live in America, like I do. Y'all, we got prison labor. We have literally preserved modern day slavery in the form of the 13th amendment. I assure you that you have at least one product in your household that was made in America using exploited labor. Just because something says made in the USA doesn't mean it's ethical. There are also family-owned businesses or companies in other countries. A lot of these manufacturers have been around for decades because they've perfected their production. Essentially, they are professionals. We have so much work to do internally instead of cherry-picking how we criticize other countries. For example, we have minimum wage, but people still live in poverty. So what did we learn? These manufacturers also have entire team members who are individuals who I speak to directly. They're not just some faceless company or a service, they're people. They report to work and get lunch breaks just like you and I. This particularly hits close to home because a lot of garments are produced in Southern Asia, but not every single worker is working in a sweatshop. It's genuinely irritating when people try to school me on ethical production when BIPOC folks are literally the backbone of exploitation. I'm very careful with my research when working with these companies and obtaining resources I've gathered within my own limitations. And I share this information hoping we collectively make better choices. Additionally, there's plenty of classism when we bring up conversations around sustainability because not everyone has the same level of access to these resources and some of us are just trying to make ends meet in order to survive. We can't continue to demonize other countries when we are consuming goods made from all over the world. And guess where your phone or laptop is made? It's a very difficult conversation to bring up, but when people have no problem ordering, for example, cute stationery or clothes from Japan or Korea, it's cute, it's trendy, and it's fashionable, but the moment something is made or shipped from China and there's hesitation, that is a red flag. I don't think anybody or anything or any line of production is perfect. I don't think we are ever going to resolve racism, but we can definitely pay attention to where it might exist internally or within our communities and learn to make better choices. So when we see people getting hate crimed or you hear something that clearly sits in racist remarks, we can carve more room to have conversations like the one I'm having right now. Because if we don't, that means we're just ignoring these issues. It's also why, as an artist, my work is not apolitical. Artists have thoughts, feelings, and opinions that make it into their work. And don't get it twisted, certain issues are about preserving basic human rights rather than politics. And politics should not be a shield to project your hatred towards others. Some of my illustrations are cute, while others are more narrative. Illustration itself is telling stories through pictures. Unfortunately, you don't see too many people of my background pursuing creative careers, which makes it incredibly difficult to step into this field and have your work taken seriously. This brings me to one of my accomplishments this month, and that was having my work make it to Adult Swim. So I was contacted originally to work on an illustration for their International Women's Day campaign, but obviously, considering the state of my health at the time, we settled on having a reuse fee on one of my previous illustrations, so I still got paid for it. And to me, those are small wins on behalf of South Asian artists. Representation is important, but it's just one of the very few components that normalize other cultures integrated into society. On top of the Adult Swim feature, I also made it into a BuzzFeed video. This was actually super fun. So I got to paint on some overalls, which I requested secondhand, and I was pretty proud of how fun the designs were, and I did my makeup really nice. There were also two other artists that were part of this collaborative video, and as I mentioned, I'll link both of those projects below. But the clips and the thumbnail was edited by the team over at BuzzFeed, which was interesting because I've never had anyone else edit my content. But this just brings me back to celebrating accomplishments here and there. Small wins for our community. However, the one drawback of having your work shared across the internet is that people will try to replicate it. I've had someone copy my exact clay earring designs and some of my pins. I did reach out and resolve it. However, the excuse for some things can be pretty lame. Particularly for this one, someone had actually sent them a photo by me in order to commission this person to make a replica. It's rough because handmade goods can only realistically be made in small batches, especially since I'm just one person and not a machine. But this creates scarcity, which is incredibly complex. Because then, people will either try to make their own or do what that person did and just commission someone else to make a replica. Now. 
I'm not claiming the ownership of a particular craft, but those designs are my intellectual property. I recently made a little Kuni clay brush holder, and there were plenty of comments that asked if they could make their own. And the answer is, of course, as long as it's not the same exact thing. Because it doesn't matter if you're just making something you like that you saw by another artist and it's for personal use, it's still art theft. That is not your original idea. There's a difference between being inspired or just ripping off someone else's time and energy they put into their own individual body of unique work. And this issue lies with ripping off smaller artists, because we are not millionaires. If someone copies, for example, Takashi Murakami, he's not going to feel that in his bank account, but I might if someone decides to turn around and sell copies of my work. And since something is handmade, you should be able to respect that there aren't going to be hundreds of that particular thing. If you want it that badly to the point where you just resort to art theft, that means you care more about the commodification of the product rather than the boundaries an artist has when it comes to their ideas. I have missed out on so many limited drops by small artists, but it's okay because I can enjoy those photos and congratulate the artist whenever they meet those sales. Even with reels or TikToks, sometimes it's just an artist sharing their process. It's not a tutorial or an invitation to take their ideas so you can own it for yourself. Because if you really want to support your favorite artist, that also means respecting their boundaries, ideas, and their time. When you're able to look at something you really, really like, think about what it sparks for you and find a way to make original work that emulates the same feeling. I'm a huge advocate for originality. I 1000% assure you, you'll feel way better producing something that's unique to you rather than something that's already been done. Art moves forward in history when we see people making work vastly different than other people. And that's why art theft doesn't get you anywhere you literally learn nothing. There are things like draw this in your own style where artists have provided that space to practice. I know a lot of younger folks are more susceptible to copying art for style or whatever, but it's better to maintain that discipline now rather than putting yourself through the complicated situations in your professional career. This is in no way to scare people from making art, but there has to be some point in which someone sculpted something or drew something that is by another person and thought, hmm, Maybe this is wrong, you know what I'm saying? It's also why I share my knowledge of supplies with other people so they have the ability to execute something in their own way. But even if someone feels uncomfortable sharing their tools or process, they don't owe you that information. And also I have things in my shop like printables so it's more accessible than, for example, originals and handmade items. So it hurts when people do copy those things. I know the intentions aren't harmful and there's probably people who replicate work and never post it, so please don't be part of that problem. It's unfortunate that as your work gains more popularity, it will be subject to art theft even more frequently, and that's not cool. Thank you for listening in on this PSA, because it's necessary to address this in a world where most people tend to exploit artists and rob their ideas. So if you are another creative, you definitely don't want to impose that on one another. Lately, I've been very busy, which is bad, because I should be resting, but as you know, I'm playing a game of catch-up at the moment. So working on restocking things from my shop and designing new products. Everything got pushed back by nearly a month, which didn't help. So it's likely my shop is going to reopen around April, but I'm not entirely sure. I really want to make pencil cases and washi tape, which I'm obsessed with. I had these really cute tags made by Dutch labels to sew onto shirts or bags. I also sold an original of mine. It was one of the drawing prompts by Rebecca Green, and I decided to illustrate some ingredients we used to make iftar during Ramadan. Even though I don't exactly consider myself as an active practitioner of faith, this imagery brings a lot of memories of being able to identify those brands of ingredients at the Asian supermarket before I could even read. And it's one of those images where you look at it and you're able to taste it or smell it. These are the components of my experience that live with me throughout time and are quite literally the spice of my life. And I'm very happy that this piece of me is now shared in someone else's home. I started group therapy for the first time, which is new and a little nerve wracking, but it's been going okay. I've been in individual therapy for about four years now, which has helped a lot for my mental well being. Uh, but I'm definitely intimidated by change. But I know change needs to happen if we want to make more room for things in life. Uh, speaking of change, I finally launched my Patreon, which was amazing. I've been working on this since January and trying to figure out how to organize my tiers and price myself fairly without spreading myself too thin. And the community on Patreon is just so loving and supportive. 
We even have a Discord server called Kuni Skate Park, which Joe Stockdale, another fellow artist, helped me moderate and set up. So thank you, Joe, you amazing Discord wizard. It's been really great so far. We hit a lot of goals. I legit didn't think this would pick up that fast, but I'm glad it's up. So if you want to pledge, you don't have to, but if you do, I can confirm there is some cool stuff I've uploaded on there. I've got exclusive videos, printables, podcasts, and things like early video and shop access and a shop discount. I honestly can't wait for my Patreon feed to just expand month to month. That way there's just a continuous addition of content for more people to enjoy. It feels so exciting to finally say this, but thank you so much to my patrons for your support. Cause that is a lot of trust to put in someone who launches a Patreon in the middle of a month. I really hope Patreon lifts a little bit of the financial stress during dry business periods so I can have more time to create and put out content both here and on Patreon. Also, don't forget to take a peek at the printables I have up in my shop at the moment. Just wanted to close out this vlog by saying thank you for making it this far along the way with me. I'm honored to take up space in your life, in a good way I hope, and I'm wishing every single one of you success and happiness in all of the things you love. And to my fellow Asian community, know that our voices are being heard. I hope that you are pulling through during a time like this. And to anyone who has experienced any form of discrimination, I wish us all healing. Thanks again for being here. And although you can't see me right now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and take care. Goodbye, friends.